Well, let's try to run through a bunch of series. Suppose we want to decide whether the following series converges or diverges. Well, we're going to try the alternating series test because it is an alternating series and it looks like it's going to be pretty easy to calculate the limit as n goes to infinity of the terms and show that they're decreasing. So the limit as n goes to infinity of the positive part is 0 because the square root of n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity. And of course, because n plus 1 is bigger than n, 1 over the square root of n plus 1 is less than 1 over the square root of n for all n greater than or equal to 1. So this series satisfies both conditions for the alternating series test, so we can conclude that it converges by the alternating series test. This test is e to the n over 10 to the n, and that e shouldn't throw you off, it's a constant, uh, so the terms of this series are some constant to the power of n. So this is a geometric series, and it's the sum of r to the n where r is equal to e over 10. And of course, r, the absolute value of r is less than 1, so therefore we can conclude that this series converges. Now here the terms of the series are a rational function of n, n plus 2 over n cubed plus 2n plus 1. And as we mentioned before, the best thing to do here is use the limit comparison test and compare this to p-series, and in deciding which p-series to use, we take the highest power in the numerator and divide it by the highest power in the denominator, and that's n over n cubed, which is 1 over n squared. So we compare this to the p-series, the sum of 1 over n squared, which we know converges. So taking the limit as n goes to infinity, of the nth term of our series divided by 1 over n squared, we get the limit as n goes to infinity of n cubed plus some smaller terms over n cubed plus some smaller terms, and that of course is equal to 1, which is greater than 0, so this series converges by the limit comparison test. Now here's the series, again, e is a constant, it's got powers of a constant, and it's got factorials, so the ratio test is probably a good test to use here. So we're going to calculate the limit as n goes to infinity of the quotient of the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n. And that's the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 factorial over e to the n plus 1 squared divided by n factorial over e to the n squared. And with these factorials, we can expect a large amount of cancellation and also with the powers of the constant. So dividing n plus 1 factorial by n factorial, we're left with n plus 1. And uh, we're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 times e to the n squared over e to the n plus 1 squared, which is e to the n squared plus 2n plus 1. And now, of course, we can break up e to the n squared plus 2n plus 1 into e to the n squared times e to the 2n plus 1 and cancel the e, e to the n squares. So we're left with the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over e to the 2n plus 1. Now, we should expect that this is zero because exponential growth always beats polynomial growth. But if you're unsure, you can plug in an x and use L'Hopital's rule here. And that gives you the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over 2 times e to the 2x plus 1, which is zero. This is less than 1, so we can conclude that this series converges using the ratio test. Let's try to figure out if this series converges or diverges. Here, the terms of the series are some function of n raised to the power of n, so the nth root test is a good candidate here. So we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a to the n, and that's the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of 3 
minus 1. And of course, the nth root of 3 is 3 to the 1 over n. So the limit as x goes to infinity of 3 to the 1 over x is 3 to the 0, which is 1. And we have our overall limit is 1 minus 1, which is 0. And this is less than 1. So therefore, this series also converges by the root test.